Hi folks, how you doing? Russell True Results 303.com. Check out the website, link in the description box, Mind Body Spirit Fitness. Put in the healing back in health while you're at the website, sign up for the free newsletter. Check out those free downloads on the uh, on the free gift button. Podcast True Results 303, Google Plus True Results 303, Facebook True Results 303. Join the community, let's make a change. It starts with us, but we've got to be willing to spread the good news and share our stories because that's how we're going to create that change we needed. Today I left the gym this morning and I was thinking about this the whole way so I'm just going to make this video uh, on why Trump, Donald Trump, is misunderstood and so popular. I guess we can do both. You might already know some of this, you might not. I'm going to start off by saying I don't know if I'm going to vote for him. I used to be a big Republican. Um, and then once I became more spiritual, came back to the Catholic Church. Now I'm just, in, you know, right in the middle. I don't know what to do. So it'll be difficult when the when the decision or when voting time comes. We'll see. Right now, hopefully, I'm actually hoping for Bernie. So it's at least Trump and Bernie. I'll give some of my opinions on that later. Uh but yeah, so I'm in the middle of the road. I don't know where to, which way to vote. So why is he so popular though? And I'm gonna go with if you follow my channel, you know it's fitness, spirituality, self improvement, all that stuff. Um, and it, now I listen to a lot of Christian rap, but I used to listen to Eminem, Fifty Cent, you know all that stuff, gangster rap, whatever you want to call it. And why Trump is so popular, I'm going to go with an Eminem verse where he says something about, I can't remember the song or the album, I don't listen to it as much anymore, but something about how, you know, I'm only giving you things you joke about with your friend inside your living room, the only difference is I got the balls to say it in front of y'all and I don't got to be false or sugar-coated at all, right? That's why Trump is so popular, you know? Some of the dumb things he said when I was younger, three years ago, whatever, I've said those things. You know, it's for a good laugh, you get a rise, whatever. Uh, but the the truth of the matter is these issues that we are dealing with right now, not only in the United States but around the world, are very complicated. And unfortunately, we are unable to come together as a society, as a human race to overcome the issues that we are dealing with. But that's number one. That is why Trump is just so popular. He just says it. He doesn't care. Rattle off, you're offended, good. You know, if you're offended, then I'm talking to you for sure. Um, but the reason why I think he's misunderstood, and this one I was watching a lot of the Republican debates, and I heard, it might have even been the next day, I heard someone say that his campaign manager was really pleading with him and telling him, look, we need to start practicing these speeches, practicing for these debates. And, you know, so when we get up there, we have really good content. And he refused. He was like, I'm not going to practice. I'm just going to go out there and do it. You know, I don't know if it's because of the business aspect where he's trying to run his business and, and make money in that sense, but he goes out there unprepared. So he's just going to rattle off whatever and whatever happens, happens. Who cares? You know, that's why he's so misunderstood because he, <laughs> he doesn't think he just goes right. Which once again is another reason why he is so appealing is because he just rattles it off. But like they said, his campaign manager is telling him that we need to come out there with well thought out topics and answers for these questions during the debate. But Trump doesn't want to do it. He's just going. He's just going off the dome. He's freestyling everything out there. That's why I think he's misunderstood. And you know, I think the the biggest one is right now. You know, was right after last week, whatever it was, where everybody was rioting in San Jose. And they were actually abusing and assaulting these Trump supporters, which is horrible. I mean, in my opinion, I think it pretty much just, you know, it just supports everything that Trump's been saying about the population from Mexico. I hate to say it. You know, I don't want to say it, but you have to say it. I mean, it, it's pretty much supporting everything that he has said. And I'm coming from a, la a landscaping background. Right now I do the personal training and all that. But I come from a landscaping background. For those of you who don't know, I landscaped for over... I started at 18. I'm about to be 34. I was at my first company for 11 years before I left. 
medium-sized company here in Colorado, and 75% of that company was, I think, illegal illegals from Mexico, illegal Mexicans. There were some good ones, but Jaime, he was my right-hand man when I ran a crew. Loved the guy to death, good dude. He's my Facebook friend. He's actually, I think, the only Facebook friend I have from that company that was Mexican, from Mexico, right? So I have more insight on what Trump might be trying to say. And once again, I think it's because Trump is just horrible at speaking. To tell you the truth, he's a horrible speaker. That's not one of his strong suits. One of his strong points is just saying whatever. But when it comes to actually speaking a well-thought-out sentence, that's a weak point for Trump, right? But when I was working there, now I'm going to give you my experience with 40 illegal Mexicans from Mexico that I knew, you know, probably more. There was probably 30, yeah, maybe 30, 40, right? So one, one thing I always heard was, why don't you have any children? That time, 27, 28, I'm going to be 34 next week, well, two weeks. And I don't have any children. And one thing I always heard was, why don't you have any children? And I would say, I can't afford children, you know. I'm like, what do you mean? Tax season, you're going to get a bunch of money back. And these are illegal, you know, illegal citizens, whatever you want to call it. I don't, I don't know what term to use because you're going to just get offended no matter what I say. These are Mexicans from Mexico, non-citizens, telling me that I need to have a kid because when tax season comes, I'm going to get a lot of money out of it. And it's like, well, yeah, what, you get $3,000 a child or something? Child costs more than $3,000 a year to raise. Sorry, I'm not going to have children, right? Or even when Obama was elected, one of them came in and he was like, we won, we won, we won. I didn't ask him if he voted, but I don't understand why he's saying we won. You know what I mean? But whatever, I mean, it is what it is. But you've got to be able to see it from another point of view. Same thing, when I was talking to these guys, I would hear my Spanish was decent. I spoke Spanish in high school. You know, I took Spanish class, so my Spanish is okay. It could definitely be a lot better. I've made friends now on Facebook and stuff with people from Spanish-speaking countries, and I definitely can't have that type of a conversation. But with these guys, Spanglish works good. The one thing I always heard was, you want to know what I always heard? Man, if you ever went to prison, you would be all right because the Mexican population would respect you because you can speak Spanish. You're a white guy that can speak Spanish, even though I'm Hispanic. But, you know, if a person saw me, they would just think I was a white person. But I am part Hispanic. But once again, why am I being told from these guys that if I ever went to prison, I'd be okay with the Mexican Hispanic community because I can speak Spanish? You know what I mean? And then, last but not least, I think the, the biggest reason why Trump's misunderstood, once again, is because of the way he talks. Mexico is not sending them here. They are coming here on their own. Right, there are really good guys at that company I worked at. There were people that got that were citizens. These were men from Mexico that had their citizenship. They went through the, you know, they went through the the steps to become actual citizens. There were a few of them, but a majority of them were illegals. Okay, and I think we've got to understand that if they are getting in trouble in Mexico, they're gonna flee here because they don't want to go to jail in Mexico. The government, Mexico's not sending them here, but unfortunately, they're probably, they could be crossing because they don't want to get in trouble, right? And once, I said, once again, like I said, this is coming from a person who did landscaping for 11 years at a company that 70%, probably 80% of their Mexican workforce was illegal. So I was around them. I was in this environment. I know what's going on, all right? I heard the stories. You know, and I never heard they were sent by Mexico, but we've got to understand that that's what is unfortunately happening. Like anything else, there are good Muslims, there are bad Muslims, there are good Christians, there are bad Christians. You know, it's hard to to know what is what, um, but there's something that needs to be done about it. I don't know what it is. Is it a wall? Is it some type of system? I don't know. That's not for me to decide. I might maybe when I come up with something, I'll make another video about it, but. Once again, I think this is why Trump is misunderstood. These are the reasons why Trump um, is having issues or why he is successful was for those reasons. And then I just wanted to give my own personal experience working construction, manual labor with a bunch of illegals to give you a point of view. You know, to a certain extent, he's right. 
We've got to understand that people flee when they get in trouble. The government's not sending them over here. They're not all bad, but we've got to figure out a way to, like they say, document and, and see which ones are here for the American dream. Got my own thoughts on that, but we, we need to figure out something. There needs to be some system in, in place, whether it's updating the old system. You know, I don't know what it is, uh, but I just wanted to give my points of view on it, and hopefully this is going to help people understand a little bit more. Like I said, I don't know who I'm voting for. I'm glad I said that. What I think needs to happen, personally, I mean, what is it? They usually say 300 million, because I, what, well, what's our, no, 300 million is our population, if I remember correctly. So they usually say about half the population is going to vote, a little under half, you know? In my opinion, I would like to see it be Bernie and Trump. Why? Because they're not career politicians. It's the start of America being able to say, we do not like the current system. We don't like career politicians. That's one reason why I want to see the two of them. Um, but what I think we need to do personally is I would like for the American people to make a, to take a stand and let's just not vote. That's my opinion. You know, if we could do that at one time and just everybody not vote or we all vote third. That's why I kind of like Bernie and Trump as well, because it's almost like voting for a third party because neither party wants them in there. But if they're in there, it's almost like we're voting for a third party. You know what I mean? So that's why I kind of like the idea of Trump and Bernie. And uh, but like I said, for me, I think it was just we all take a stand and we just boycott a vote. I mean, what would it look like to the world if. The population, like I said, if I remember correctly, I didn't look it up, is 300 million. In the United States, we usually get 100 to 150 million turnout. And then all of a sudden, only like 3 million people vote. I mean, that would be sending a powerful message to the world that we don't like what's going on. Even to our own government, we don't like what's going on. Um, but I think something needs to happen, you know. But like I told my buddy, who was a hardcore Republican forever, and now... He started to listen to a little bit more Democrat, NPR type stuff. You know, he's, he's gotten to that point to where he needs to understand the perspective of both sides instead of just being Rush Limbaugh maniac. Uh, but what I always told him was, I don't think it mattered who was, if it was Obama or not, the debt would still be at 19 trillion, 21 trillion, whatever we're at now. It's just the collapse was so, you know, so... Uh, enormous that it had a, a major impact that a Republican wouldn't have been able to fix either. We would have, there would have still been bailouts. There would have still, it would have all still happened the way it happened. But in my opinion, I think it's, you know, we just need to stand up. I was listening, I found some new Facebook page. I can't remember what it was called and I'm on my phone, so I can't look it up. Um, but I saw something today. It said, I was listening to the, to one of their videos when I was driving to the gym and it said something about when when laws become unjust, resistance becomes a duty. And I like that, you know. Or last night, yesterday, I was at, there's a group I've, I'm starting to participate in here in Denver called Young Catholic Professionals. And I think she's the president of that, who, uh, Lydia something. And, you know, she's coming around and kind of talking. And we were, I asked her what the next topic was going to be. And it was going to be, you know, by... What was it? By some other person that's a part of that organization's father who was a financial advisor or an investor or something was going to talk about finances and God and how to balance it. And then we got into topics like that. And, you know, she's really close with the priest because, of course, they do masses once a month at the cathedral downtown. And she said that the, the priest told her that the young kids of this generation are really radical when you're all in you're all in and it was in the case of you know finding there's a list out there somewhere it's you know um organizations or corporations that support planned parenthood so catholics shouldn't purchase from them because they support planned parenthood he goes you know and then you try to get on that list and you try to boycott all of them and da da da, da. and in my opinion i think that's what we need you know we need jesus was a radical was a radical dude, right? He came up and broke the entire system. 
And I think that's what we as a people need to do. We need to find a way to get the point across that we are sick and tired of what's going on. And we want change. And we want something to, you know, something to, to happen that's going to be for the better of everybody. And not just one person. Or one group of people. I've heard it said best, you know, where it's the same thing. Like if Jesus says, uh, you know, love your neighbor, love your enemy. I listen to a guy called Killer Mike who's a big Bernie supporter. That's why, for me, I'm kind of on the fence with Bernie just because I like listening to Killer Mike. He's a rapper churn activist. Start talking. Uh, but I heard him say it best. Um, you know, he has a lot of money. He sends his child to private school. But the one thing he said, he's like, but I'm still voting for free education. I already make enough money to send my child to, to private school, to the best school. You know, at a couple, you know, he didn't say a couple thousand dollars, but I know that's, you know, here at our little church, at, at our school, I think it's like $4,000 to send your child to school there. You know, so he's probably paying anywhere between five and 10. I know in Denver, there's a high school here, uh, uh, Camp Denver, just for high school. This is high school, folks. It's like $17,000 a year to send your kid to this high school. It's freaking crazy. $17,000 a year to send your kid to a high school. That is outrageous. Um, but you know, it's like he said, I'm not voting in my interest because I don't need free ed I don't need public, uh, private schools or vouchers or whatever for my children. I can afford to send them to private school. He's like, I'm doing this for you. So I think we've got to get to the point to where we, we stop voting for our best interest and we start voting for everyone's best interest. And then I think great things will happen. But of course, that's going to take sacrifice on our part. But anyways, we're at 16 minutes, uh, 17 minutes. Anyways, you know, I hope this helped, gave you food for thought, kind of gave you a, a view and an aspect from someone who worked construction with... Uh, a lot of Mexican workers from Mexico. Illegal. So, anyways, once again, subscribe to the channel. Share and like these videos.